Okay, this is the 14.4 video. We're going to be doing double integrals in polar form. So if you need to go back and review your polar, you might want to do that. Um, I forgot to write down what page it was on, so I don't know, but you can look it up in the index uh, polar stuff uh, from Kelby, I believe, is where we did it. So um, just go ahead and warn you, probably there's going to be some interruptions in this video. Um, I'm in a different place. Hopefully the light is as good in here as it is in the other room. Um, but we'll see. It's just been a crazy day, and so you just got to go with the flow, and so here we go. 14.4 double integrals. Um, the purpose of this is to take integrals that would normally be difficult to integrate either because of the function or because of their bounds and change them into polar coordinates to make them easier. So they have a little bit of an introduction to this. We're not going to get into it too much, but um, just like in the 14.1, um, section where we looked at how you can divide the region up into rectangles and then you can um, use those as the base and then the height is determined by the function so you're finding the volume of these little boxes to approximate the uh, volume. Here they have these things called polar rectangles and so um, they talk about it here in this paragraph this is page 780. There's a picture of it here and they've got a lot of information and there's just a lot of it so we're not really going to get into it but all of this and all of this of how it develops but basically I just want to mention that so that you will know why you have this extra weird piece. So notice in this integral originally it would be well originally it was x and y but anyway originally it was a function f of x y equals or f of x y uh, da equals and then now they've switched it to polar so notice this new piece. This piece is the part that's new here. See it? The r. So you've got um, bounds on your theta. They're going to be like 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, things like that. They're um, radian measures. <clears throat> and then you've got r being between two functions of theta. r is a function of theta. So these will be things like uh, cosine plus 1, secant theta, something like that. And then you've got a function here that's going to be a function of usually just r's, but it could be r's and, I mean, sorry, usually just thetas, but it could be r's and thetas. Um, <clears throat> actually, I don't know. Usually it's probably both r's and thetas. Who knows? We'll see when we do some examples. It could be whatever. Um, but then this is the piece that I wanted to mention, this r. This um, When you switch from da, which da would be either dx dy or dy dx, um, now it's going to become r dr d theta. It kind of is rhymey, so it's easy to remember r dr d theta. Um, but the reason why that R pops up, it comes from the fact that you are dealing now with polar rectangles instead of regular rectangles. And so polar rectangles have a different formula, and that's why that R pops up. So the, the dx dy that you would have had here if they wrote it, or dy dx, that was from the area of a rectangle because it was the uh, length times the width. And so that's what the dx dy or dy dx was. But now for polar, you've got this r dr d theta. So I just wanted to mention it so that you would know why it was there, where it came from, and hopefully so that you won't forget it. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to read this to you, but at the bottom of page 781, they talk about how to find the limits of integration. So obviously first start with the picture. Then you're finding the bounds on the r. Then you're finding the bounds on the theta. So you can go back and read this later. <clears throat> and then they have another formula here. This is like what we were talking about before um, where you can use a double integral to find area if your function is 1. So notice the r dr d theta, that's just the da. So the function is actually a 1. The function is not um, the r. See up here how it would be a function and then times the r dr d theta. So if there's no function, then that's just a 1. And so the double integral um, represents area. So here they have the da is the r dr d theta. Okay, and then here they talk about how to change, this is 782, how to change from Cartesian, which would be the x and y, to polar. So notice here they have the r and the g. It's the same region, it's just the r would be defined in terms of x's and y's, and the g would be determined, defined in terms of um, r's and thetas. It's the same region, just a different way to describe it. So go back and read this stuff on your own later. <coughs> Excuse me. Go back and read this stuff on your own later because it has some good information. Um, but we're going to look now at some examples. So this is page 784. Actually, first we're going to look at my notes. And then we're going to look at some examples. So let's look at my notes. If you notice this table looks different, it's because I'm at a different table. The other table is yucky because the skylights leak and it messes up the finish on the table and it's gross. And so I have to keep a tablecloth on it. This table, however, is not under skylights. And so um, 
It is not yucky, so I do not need a tablecloth. Okay, this is the formula from the book. Okay, pretty much the same as they have written, well, exactly the same as they have written in the book. Here, if the function is one, then you're finding area. Uh, here is switching from Cartesian to polar. Um, just a reminder about some polar stuff. X, X in Cartesian is the same thing as R cosine theta and polar. Y is R sine theta. DA becomes R dr d theta. R and G are the same region, but this one's de uh, described in terms of X and Y. This one's described in terms of R's and thetas. All right, let's get to some examples. Number two, well, what, number one through eight, they give you a region and you have to describe it in polar coordinates. So anytime they talk about polar, you're using R and theta, not X and Y. <coughs> Goodness, okay. Um, so here you have the region between a circle of radius one and a circle of radius four. So your R would be between zero and, I mean, sorry, between one and four, but then you only have the right half of it. So for the right half of it, if you start here, this would be negative pi over two to pi over two. Okay. <clears throat> you couldn't, you couldn't call this like three pi over two because then it wouldn't work for going back up this way. Well, I guess you could say three pi over two to five pi over two, but that'd just be weird. So negative pi over two to pi over two, that would be your bounds on the theta. <clears throat> so that's all they want here. They're wanting you to just, you know, get back used to polar again. Okay, number four is a little more difficult. So instead of having you try it by yourself, I'll walk you through it. Number four, you have two lines. Okay, so you have the line x equals one, which is here, this vertical one. And then you have the line uh, y equals the square root of x. I'll, I'll tell you, <clears throat> well, we'll talk about that one in a second. But where it comes from is, see this line here? It has a y-intercept of zero and then a slope of the square root of three because it goes um, up the square root of three and right one. So if you can't do that in your head, if you, if you can't get that in your head, um, <clears throat> without showing any work, the work that you would show is you would use the point zero zero and you would use the point one square root of three and then you would use the formula for slope. You uh, subtract the y's over subtract the x's and then you, that's how you get the slope and then the y-intercept <clears throat> is still just zero. All right, so let's take these one line at a time. We're going to start with x equals one. So x is the same thing as r cosine theta. So x equals one becomes r cosine theta equals one and then you want to try to solve it for r kind of like you want to always solve for y in, in normal algebra, algebraic things. Here you want to solve for r in polar things. So you're going to divide both sides by cosine and one over cosine is the same thing as secant. So I get r equals secant. And then notice here, it's got a lot of whiting out. I should buy stock and white out. I swear, I use so much white out, I should just buy stock in it and then I could be making money when I'm buying it. Probably wouldn't work out that way, but whatever. Okay, um, so here's the work. Well, here's the work for that. Just <clears throat> again, if it's not if it's not obvious, I'm going to just show the work here. If it's obvious, you don't have to show this work. Okay, x is the same thing as r cosine theta. If you're out here, you have moved um, where your r is one, and your um, well, if you're at, okay, let me start back over here. If you're at pi over three, your uh, cosine is one half, and so x is one half. And r is um, square root of three over two, which is the same thing as pi over three. And so you can kind of check it here in this. In this, if you put the y here and the x here, you can see that that works. So this line is the same thing as this line. Remember in polar, if you have r equals a number, it's a circle. If you have theta equals a number, it's a line. And so here, theta equals pi over three is the same thing as this line. So what you want to think about on these lines is kind of think about, you know, what, what order pair do I have? And what would that correspond to in terms of, um, not order pair, what <coughs> r and theta, excuse me, what r and theta do I have? And um, what would that correspond to? So you can use these equations. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so here would be my bounds. Uh, theta is, be uh, sorry, r is between zero and secant. Theta is between zero and pi over three. Okay, you can try number six on your own, but it's a little tricky. So if, if you uh, can't figure it out, don't feel bad because it's a little tricky. So notice what it was. I've got stuff marked all over here, so you kind of already can see the answer because I've already marked it all over here. But anyway, it was a circle of radius 2. See how it was a circle of radius 2? But you're just taking part of it. And so what you have to do is figure out what part in terms of theta that corresponds to. And then down here too, like where it cuts it off. So again, it's the same, it's the same idea. That's where the x is 1. 
Here you're on a uh, unit, you're not on the unit circle anymore. You're on a circle of radius two. So your R is now two. On the unit circle, your R is always one. But this is not the unit circle anymore. This is the circle of radius two. And then here, this vertical line is x equals one. So that's kind of all the pieces. Um, so down here, uh, x equals one becomes this. Same thing as before. R is secant. Um, and then if R is if r is 2, you could have done that here. I didn't even think about telling you to do that here. Um, here, you could have plugged in the r. Well, no, never mind. Just ignore me. Okay, I was thinking of a better way, but then that's not going to work out. So never mind, just pretend like I didn't say that. Okay, but if the r is 2 here, then you can put the 2 for the r, secant theta. And so uh, secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So if cosine was 1 half, 1 over 1 half would be 2. So you would ask yourself, where is cosine 1 half? And that would be at pi over 3 again. So notice here, this one is pi over 3. So this one must be negative pi over 3. So theta is between negative pi over 3 and pi over 3. And r is between secant theta and 2. Can you hear that noise? My husband is pressure washing with the pressure washer, the back deck. And um, that's why I'm in here, because the sunroom is right by the back back deck and it's loud so I don't know if you can hear that but it's a lot less loud in here in my kitchen than it is back there in my sunroom so anyway maybe he'll be done pressure washing by the time I make my next video and I won't have to move into the kitchen okay let's look at uh, the next group of problems 9 to 22 um, 9 to 22 new set of directions why are you not focusing okay there we go Change the Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral and then evaluate. So um, it's in Cartesian, x and y. You want to change it to polar, r and theta, and then integrate it. Okay, uh, number 10 is the one we're going to do. So notice here I've, I've set up what they gave me. Um, the x is the inside, so they, they match up inside and inside, and then outside and outside. So this would be my x, this would be my y. And, um, well, I didn't show it. I didn't show the work here, so hold on. We've done this before, I think, but just in case, let me, I know, I know you can't see what I'm writing, but I can't see what I'm writing. If I, there, maybe I can do it that way. Okay, so if you square both sides, and then you move the y over, see how that's the same thing as the unit circle? But this, because you don't have the plus or minus on it, just means the x is positive. So because there was no plus or minus, it just means the x is positive for the unit circle. And then the y is also positive, so it's just the part of the unit circle that's in the first quadrant. So it's just that one-fourth of the circle. Okay, and then for your function, oh, I guess I could finish my bounds. Let me finish my bounds. Okay, if this is the unit circle, then the r is between 0 and 1. And if it's in the first quadrant, then the theta is between 0 and pi over 2. So the picture helps you to be able to figure that out. And then for your function, here's my function. That's the same thing as r squared. x squared plus y squared is the same thing as r squared. It's one of those formulas from, I guess, Cal B. I can't remember where you did that. I teach Cal A and Cal B, so I can never remember which class stuff is in, but I'm pretty sure it was Cal B. Okay, so I got my new bounds. Notice here is my function. The x squared plus y squared became r squared. And then this is what my dx dy became. r dr d theta. Don't forget your r. It's r dr d theta. The bounds on the r, the bounds on the theta. I'm going to put these two r's together. It becomes r cubed. Then I'm going to integrate plug in my r, then I'm going to integrate again, plug in my thetas, and I get pi over 8. Okay, so pi over 8 is the value of this integral. All right, so we're going to have you try one by yourself. I can get my papers to skewed up, skewed up papers. Um, let me try to cover up the work. Okay, this is number 16. So number 16, notice here my function is a 1. So if my function is a 1, I'm actually finding area, whereas up here, when my function was not a 1, I was finding volume not important in the grand scheme of this problem but just fyi okay try this by yourself pause the video and then come back and check your answer all right i pause to give you chances to pause it and start it again i hope you're actually doing that because it will help your learning tremendously if you are not and you're just sitting there in the awkward pause then you are robbing yourself of a valuable learning opportunity okay let's look at what we have Set it up as they gave it to me. Again, the x lines up on the inside, y lines up on the outside, so this is what I have. x equals this. It's the same kind of principle. You could square both sides. It's a circle radius 2 now. So I have the circle radius 2, and then this is the line y equals x. 
And notice the X. So let me get my pencil here. The X, it has the circle on the left and the line on the right. So the circle on the left and the line on the right. And then the Y's are between this here. Hold on. Right there. That right there is the square root of 2 to 2. So it's from the square root of 2 to 2. So it's just this really small little section. I don't know if you can see it very good, but that's the section. That's the R. So when you, if you have trouble deciding what to shade, just look at what these are telling you. It's saying this is on the left, this is on the right. It's saying this is on the bottom, this is on the top. And so there's only one region you can shade to satisfy the inequalities. All right, let's switch them over. Um, y equals x, the line, is the same thing as theta equals pi over 4, because remember, theta equals a number is a line. So that's the line pi over 4. And y equals 2, y is the same thing as r sine theta. So that's um, solving for r, 2 cosecant theta. All right, so my r is between the circle and the line. And then my theta is between pi over 4 and pi over 2. So those would be my bounds. All right, so here's what my function or my integral looks like. Make sure you have the r dr d theta. So when you integrate the r, it's a one half r squared. Then you plug in. And here I factored out the four just to cancel it with this one half. If you didn't do that, that's okay. You're going to end up at the same place as me anyway later. Um, but the integral of cosecant squared would be negative cotangent because the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And then you have the theta, and you plug in. So you should have ended up with, um, it might look better to write 2 minus pi over 2. So 2 minus pi over 2 or negative pi over 2 plus 2. So that's the answer to number 16. All right, so let's try one more of these. This one's a little tricky, but if you want to try it by yourself, you can. It's number 22. Um, you have to switch the bounds and to switch the function. Okay, so I wrote down what they gave me. If you want to pause the video here and try it by yourself, that'd be great. Okay, so why I'm going to work this out. Notice what happens here. It's the same principle as what I was showing you on the paper here, except it's got this extra, this extra x, like instead of the constant before, it's got this x. So you square both sides, and then you move everything over. And now this is a circle, but it's not centered at the origin, so you got to complete the square. So I complete the square, I take this number, divide by 2, and square it. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, and then I add it to both sides. I guess I could have written that as 0 plus 1, so that was a little more obvious, but I added it to both sides. Then notice this is a circle, radius 1, but centered at 1, 0. So you've got the circle centered at 1, 0, radius 1, so it would be here. And then you have um, x is between 1 and 2. So I drew the line here for x equals 1. And then this is where x equals 2. And then it's be it's the y has got 0 on the bottom and the circle on the top. So it would be this portion that's shaded. So where x equals 1 intersects the circle, that would be the point 1, 1. See, it's 1, 1. And so the point 1, 1 is the same thing as the line. Well, the line through the point 1, 1 is the same thing as the line y equals x. And the line y equals x is the same thing as theta equals pi over 4. So the circle, notice I just did a little bit of rearranging. Go back up here and put the x squared plus y squared together. So x squared plus y squared minus 2x. x squared plus y squared is r squared. x is r cosine. And then I move this over, divide both sides by r, and I get r is 2 cosine theta. x equals 1, we've done this before. r is secant theta. So here's my bounds. I have um, the line on the left and the circle on the right. And then my theta is between 0 and pi over 4. And then my function, that came from up here. My function, x squared plus y squared is r squared, but it's squared, so it's r to the fourth. You're, you can't tell, but your multiplying power is not adding. So here's what I end up with for my integral. I have for my function 1 over r to the fourth. And then for my dA, I have r dr d theta. So notice this r is going to cancel out one of these. So it's 1 over r cubed, which is the same thing as r to the negative 3. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate. Add 1 to the power, multiply by the reciprocal of the new power. Plug in. You're squaring this stuff. And then a cosine squared in the bottom is the same thing as a secant squared in the top. And a secant squared in the bottom is the same thing as a cosine squared in the top. So I brought those up so that I don't have fractions. 
And then you can integrate secant squared, it's just tangent, but you cannot integrate cosine squared. Do not write one third cosine cubed. Please do not write that. All right, so you're gonna use that trig identity. Cosine squared is um, this, and then I just multiplied the one half times the one half and then distributed it, and I got this, and then I integrate, plug in, pi over 16 is my final answer. All right, so obviously lots and lots of trig stuff in this section, because that's kind of what polar is all about. All right, let's look at a new uh, group of problems here. Um, 23 to 26, sketch the region, convert from polar to Cartesian, but don't evaluate. Okay, so 24. I have, here's my bounds on my theta. That's a one, it's really small, but that's a one. Here's my bounds on my r. Notice this is r squared. So that's the same thing as an r with the cosine and then an r for the dr d theta. So that r squared, there were, there were two r's. There was one here and there was one in the r dr d theta. So you gotta split those back up because this one needs the r dr d theta on it to go back to the da. Okay, so r cosine theta is x, r dr d theta is da. So now let's look at the bounds. My r was between these two things, my theta here. So this is kind of working backwards from what we were doing before. r equals cosecant, that's the same thing as r equals one over sine, multiply on both sides. r sine theta is y, so y equals one. Okay, and then r equals one, square both sides, r squared equals one, because one squared is still just one. And then that's x squared plus y squared equals one. Or you can just recognize that, hey, that's a circle radius one. This is a circle radius one. They're the same thing. So you can just do it that way if you want to. So here's my circle centered at the origin radius one. Here is my line, whoops, there's my line, y equals one. Okay, and then I had here, theta, but well, here's where I wrote it. Theta between pi over six and pi over two. So I drew in my pi over six and then starts there and then it goes around to pi over two. So it's this section here. And the way, the reason why I knew to shade up there was because I had uh, the circle and then the line. So I've got the circle and then the line. R's kind of move out from the origin. R, R represents how far you are from the origin. So like X, you would move left and right. R, you would move up and down. But I mean, sorry, Y, you would move up and down. Let's try that again. X is left and right. R is up and down. Oh, I still can't get it right. Okay. Last time, I'm gonna do it, third time the charm. X moves left and right, Y moves up and down, and then R moves from the origin out. Okay, so from the origin out is how R moves. So it, you are, uh, like whatever's closest to the origin would be the smaller bound, and then whatever's further away from the origin would be the larger bound, because R moves from the origin out. Okay, so here, um, if you look at this region, in terms of x's and y's. You have two choices on x's and y's. You can do, just ignore that stuff, that's another problem. Jeez, I can't cover it up. Okay, um, you can do arrows bottom to top or left to right, but notice if you do bottom to top, here you've got the circle on the bottom and the line on the top. Here you've got the line on the bottom and a different line on the top. So you would need two different integrals. But if you go left to right, you've always got the circle on the left and this line on the right. So you wanna go left to right, obviously, because why would you do two integrals when you can just do one? So um, that's what I was just talking about there. Now I'm gonna solve this equation. If I'm gonna go left to right, I need x as a function of y. So I'm gonna solve this, this for x. So move this stuff over, take the square to both sides. I already know from my picture that x is positive, so I only have the positive case. And then here's the work. You can probably figure this out on your own. This is the same line as before, but just in case you can't figure this out on your own. Um, no, this is just kidding. This is not the same line as before. The one before had a um, square root of three instead of one over square root of three. Anyway, same principle. Um, theta equals pi over six. That's the line between zero and square root of two, one half, because that's the cosine and sine values at pi over six. So if you can't do this in your head, here's the slope formula that I was talking about a minute ago. Subtract the y, subtract the x, get the slope. This is the y-intercept. So here's your equation as y equals a function of x. But you need it as x equals a function of y. So you're going to uh, solve for the x. And so this is your line. Okay, so your x's are between the circle and the line. And your y's are between 1 half and 1. So here would be your bounds 
and then um, we figured this out earlier that the function was x. Okay, so that's changing it. You rarely do that, changing from polar to Cartesian. This is just to kind of, you know, if you can do it both ways, it shows you understand it a little bit better. But usually it's going from Cartesian to polar because certain things like circles are just easier to evaluate in polar. All right, let's look at another type of problem. Different directions. This one doesn't even have directions, it's just this problem. 28. Find the area of the region that's inside the cardioid. Can you hear my crock pot? That's hilarious. I don't know if you can hear that. I've got my crock pot cooking my supper, and sometimes when it gets hot, it starts the lid starts to um, shake. I don't know. It's making a hilarious noise. So if you hear that over the sound of my husband pressure spraying, then that's my crock pot cooking my supper. Okay, um, find the area of the region that lies inside the cardioid and outside the circle. So here we go. I drew it. They kind of looked the same, so I, I went back over my circle and made it pink so you could tell which one was one and which one was the other. I'm horrible at drawing cardioids, just in case you can't tell from this picture. But you've got the pink circle and the blue cardioid, and you want to be inside the cardioid but outside the circle. So you're in this region here. So your X, I mean, sorry, not your X, your R, it, um, as, as you're moving out, you have uh, your left limit would be the circle, your right limit would be the cardioid, and then you have negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for your theta. All right, so you set up your bounds here. It, it told me to find the area. So if I'm finding the area, my function is 1, and then I have r d r d theta. So this is a very basic integral. You just integrate, but then when you get to here, I know you are not going to write the integral of cosine squared as 1 third cosine cubed, because that's horrible. Don't do that. So we're going to have to fix that and rewrite it. So I've done that down here using this trig identity. Notice those one halves canceled. Here's a one half minus a one half, so that that's where they went. I had the wrong sign on them earlier, hence all the whiting out. Okay, so here's where I fixed everything. And then I integrated. It's getting squished. Sorry, I hope you can read that. Then I plug in. Here's the rest of my work and it's two plus pi over four. Right, so this is polar. Um, again, polar is very helpful because when you have circles, they just they just lend themselves much better to polar. So it's very nice. And so in, I think 14.6, let's see. Nope, just kidding, 14.7. 14.7, see how we're gonna have cylindrical and spherical coordinates? Cylindrical is the three-dimensional version of polar. So we're gonna get more polar, but in 3D in 14. So I know you're looking forward to that. All right. Well, if you have any questions, send me an email.